Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hi, food friends. I'm Ralph, behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And Ralph, today we are doing kind of part two of our salad dressing episodes. Made from scratch. Made from scratch. We're making a tomato soup dressing. Which would be more tangy and savory? Yes. Than the one we... Did we did a sweet dressing a, a couple weeks ago, um, a celery seed dressing uh, that had honey in it. It was on the sweeter side. This time we're going to make a tomato soup dressing. Uh, this was really popular in the 1950s, and I think why shouldn't it still be popular, right? That's what I say. So, um, is it good enough for Elvis? It was good enough for us. <laughs> exactly. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to basically start with, you can't have a tomato soup dressing without tomato soup. Okay. So we're going to put in a can of tomato soup here. Makes you know. sense. You need a blender for this, folks. Okay, I'm going to go on and scrape that can, don't we? Do the old scoop rooney You know. Our moms knew how to get everything out of a can, didn't they? Yeah, they had to make it stretch to yeah, feed the family. So, anyways, without making too much of a mess, I'm going to try to all right, get all that out. All right. So, we've got a can of tomato soup. Then, I have got two tablespoons of sugar, um, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of dry mustard. Those look pretty heaping. So we're going to put those in there. Paprika, mustard, sugar, and salt. And salt, okay. Then I have got a tablespoon of Worcestershire sheer sauce. What's this here sauce? Okay, okay. we're going to put that in there. All right. Maybe we can give that a little blend up. Just technically known as a zhuzh. Yeah. Okay. So, now here's what I've got. I've got a clove of garlic, and I've got a small onion chopped up, okay? Uh -huh. Okay. We're going to put that in here, and we're going to let the blender sort of pulverize it, okay? Liquefy it. So mash it. We're going to put that in there, and let's, let's get that going. This is something a blender is really good for, is liquefying things. So, you want to get that onion, on, that pieces of onion and garlic all chopped up in there. Now, of course, like any other dressing, we have oil and vinegar. I've got one cup of oil and one cup of vinegar. You know what? I see a little Worcestershire left in here. I'm going to do like this. And then I'm going to put the remainder, one cup of apple cider vinegar. For our viewers who don't know, Worcestershire is very... Um complex. It's got a lot of different things in it. It's, Dozens. And it's been around for a long time. Dozens of ingredients. And it, it, it gets better with age. Like us. Huh. Okay. So we're going to let that go. Now the last thing I have is the oil. Now I've got a cup of vegetable oil. Again, you could, we, you want to use a neutral tasting oil here. Vegetable, canola, canola, corn would also be a, a fine choice. Okay, you could use any of those. No motor oil. <laughs> yeah, no pens oil. And no olive oil. So. You know why most blenders have a lid with a cap in it? No. Okay, just for this reason, Ralph. What? So that you can oh. drizzle things oh. into 
the oh, carafe or the pitcher. Sense. Okay, Tell us that's about, why. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's why many blenders are designed with a removable uh, little top top so that you can run your blender and you can add little things in without having to stop it. Do you have your hand raised? Tell us about the blender. Oh, so this one, you know, I used this one in our last video as well, and I forgot how much I liked it. This is a Hamilton Beach. We're going to ask our buddy Hans to help paint this. It's from the late 60s, early 70s. Hamilton Beach made this model for a long time, and it also was sold and marketed under something called a cookbook blender. But this one's called a Deluxe Liquid Blender. It looks fun and easy. Well, I like it's easy to control, which is what I like about it, because the controls are right on here. Kind of like a slide control? Yes. As opposed to the button pushing? And it's got seven speeds, whip, puree, grate, chop, mix, blend, and liquefy. Okay. Now, look at that. Look at that beautiful kind of golden orange color. Yeah, great color. And I'm going to just, let's take a look at consistency here. Looks like cream of tomato oh, okay. soup. Okay. And we're going to take a little taste. Oh, that's good. Yep. Tangy. But you get the tomato, you get the <laughs> onion flavor. Although there's no onion texture in it, which is nice. A little of the garlic and the spices. So it checks all the boxes. Absolutely. So I'm going to put this, you want to put this in a container with a tight fitting lid and put it in the fridge uh, until, you know, a little before you're ready to use it. So again, when we have company, uh, especially for a luncheon, I'll often make a, a salad of some sort, uh, often with grilled chicken or maybe something, some other kind of protein on it, so it's more of a meal. But the thing to really make a salad special is serve it with a homemade dressing um, and serve it with good bread. And if possible, give folks a choice between savory and tangy and sweet exactly and that's what I like to do because some people like the sweet some people like the sass I mean the tangy the, ta the tangy yes that's right so anyways this is uh, uh, tomato soup salad dressing uh, makes about two cups roughly it looks like and um, yeah, I'm sorry no it makes three and a half cups I'm sorry uh, almost four cups. Of so you, you put it in a tightly lidded. I'll use jar, a mason jar and yeah. then put it in the fridge till yeah, yeah, till it'll it. it'll it'll last a good three four weeks. But then you take it out a little bit ahead of the meal. Yeah, so that it's not super cold and too thick, um, because you want it loose enough so that it really coats nicely um, when when people put it on their salad. Well, making this tangy tomato soup dressing sure was fun with our friends, wasn't it? It was, and the recipe is below, uh, so you can check that out and give it a try. Put your blender to work, and here's the website address, cavalcadeofood.com. Uh, there's all kinds of fun stuff there, and we'll say share, like, and subscribe if you're into what we do here in Cavalcade of Food here in Croswell, Michigan. Other than that, I will say thank you, Camera. You're welcome. And we'll thank our friends for watching. Thank you. And we'll look forward for, uh, to, to joining them. To them joining us next time. Yeah, right here on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.